welcome to the Irish in the UK. This week we're up in the high peak of Derbyshire to meet 14 year old Katie Radcliffe and she will be telling us all about training her dog. We'll be attending O'Shea's Irish Bar in Manchester as they celebrate 25 years in existence. We'll be joining John F. Kennedy's GEA Club in Leeds as they play a memorial game to remember Sean Sweeney who sadly passed away at a very young age. But first up, we're off to meet the Rua Band who has been a huge success in the USA and are here on tour in the UK with Westlife. When your lips are close to mine, I get carried away. Hey, 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 hey. When I'm with you, all I find is losing track of time. I, I, I. Don't go, don't stop, let's get complicated. I'm swept away like a bubble. No SOS, I'm already in trouble, trouble. Cause you like a day. Rosanna, tell me a little bit about the Rua. So we are a family band born in England, uh, but bred in Ireland, our family all Irish. Um, and we've learned music from a very, very young age. We had to, it was mandatory in our family. You had to learn the piano and the violin um, and sing. And about six years ago, our dad said that we should form a band. And I think we did a cover of Rainy Days and Mondays by the Carpenters and kind of went from there. You've had huge success in America. We have. We've been very, very lucky with the success we've had at Radio in America. Currently, our single is 26 in the Billboard Adult Pop chart and on the Hot AC Airplay chart as well. Alana, tell me a little bit about your tour with Westlife. Well, it's a 30 date tour around the UK um, and we've got a few under our belts, which we've been really excited about and it's been yeah, an amazing experience and we can't wait for all the rest of them. And of course, you're here in Manchester for uh, the Amin Arena tonight, and that's going to be a really, really big show. Yes, it's going to be the biggest one. Um, so, yeah, we are excited. When we were on stage rehearsing the other day, not in Manchester, but um, in Belfast, Jonathan said to me, now, just imagine another huge tier above all of this. It's like, OK, right, well, we'll see when we get there later on. Jonathan, how are you managing working with your two sisters? Awful. No, it's good. <laughs> it's good fun, and we all get on with each other. And I think because we're family, uh, we know each other's strengths as well and we know when to not annoy each other. But I think it's really nice, you've got a nice family uh, you know, group here, you're all working together and I know that you've got your uncle and various people involved as well in the background. Yeah, no, it keeps us, keeps us in check as well. I think if we were friends it would be different, whereas your family you can talk to each other a bit easier and everything like that. So yeah, I think it helps being family and having family around you, yeah. Tell me about your experience appearing on The Late Late Show. It was great fun. We did the Late Late Show and we played one of our songs off our other album, uh, the song called Without You. And it was a great experience, really good, and it had a really good lineup. No, it was great fun. How often do you get back home? We were in Belfast a week ago, but no, we, we go over a lot back and forth. Uh, still to see family up in Portrush and uh, around Donegal, and then we've got family in Galway as well. So yeah, we're, we're back and forth. Now, Rosanna, of course, you can tell me about your very famous family in County Galway, because I happen to come from County Galway as well. Oh, it's a good county to come from. So um, our auntie is a wonderful woman called Dana, who lives in Clare Galway. Um, you know, she's very, very supportive of us and our music. She came to see us play in, um, in Belfast on the last night we were there. And um, she was so proud and had so many tips for us as well and made sure, she was so funny, she made sure that the crowd knew that she, we were her nieces and nephews. She really wanted, she was like, oh, what do you think of the Rua? And then she didn't tell them, and then she went, they're my nieces and nephews. So she was so proud of us, um, which is great. If people want to get your uh, music and know a little bit more about you, how can they do that? So if you go online to therua.com, so the Rua, the, and then R-U-A, uh, dot com, that has all our information um, about Twitter, which is at the Rua official, and Instagram as well. You're all my yeah, You're all I ever wanted You're all I ever 
get carried away. We're delighted to see the Rua Band doing so well and of course we wish them the very best of luck in the future. Now we're off to meet 14 year old Katie Radcliffe to find out all about training her dog. Katie, when did you first get involved in sheepdog training? It was about two years ago and we always said when we got to having 50 sheep we'd get some more, we'd get a sheepdog. So then we got to over 50 sheep and we decided it was probably time to get a sheepdog. So then we got our first sheepdog Nell from White Rose Sheepdogs in Yorkshire. So then I got into trialling and I went to Jim Hussey's trial in Hayfield and the more I got into it, the more dogs we got and just the more I loved it. So how much time do you actually put into training them? I do put a lot of time into it because I just love it so much. And I get home from school, I get changed and then I go onto the farm and I work my dogs and it's just amazing. So where do you go to school? I go to the King's School in Macclesfield and they are so supportive of everything I do with the sheepdogs. And if I want to take time off to go to gyms, trials or hayfield trials where I run as a beginner, they're just so supportive. Is there a bit of competition between you and your dad going on? Because we saw both you, you know, trialling your dogs here today. And uh, I, I just thought your dad was trying to beat you there. Oh, definitely. But there's no way you'll ever beat me because, yeah, my dogs are very good. <laughs> Now, Mark, you must be very proud of your daughter here getting involved in all this and getting involved in the farm as well. Yeah, absolutely, yeah. Um, Katie's key to the, the farm and she absolutely loves the dogs. She has her own, breeds her own pedigree texels. Um, it's everything about the farm Katie loves, yeah. Very, very proud of her, yeah. So do you go trialling together at weekends and stuff? Yeah, we do, yeah. We do the um, Derbyshire, Cheshire, Stafford um, sheepdog trials. Um, I run in the novice section um, with my dog and then Katie runs, she used to run as a beginner but now she runs as a young handler which she can do up to I think till she's 21. Katie what other animals have you got here on the farm? We have six horses so we have, well I just love riding the horses so we go out hacking on them and then we have about 300 sheep so my dad does commercial sheep so we have some mules and that's really good but then I have pedigree texels so I have quite a small flock of them and yeah I, lo I just love doing it. Now you're up here Mark in a beautiful part of the world of course High Peak District it's lovely it must be great to live here. Yeah absolutely fabulous right on the edge of the Peak District Park we're at just under 1200 feet um, only the fittest survive in, in a place like this to be honest with you but it is it's, it's gorgeous yeah. yeah. Jimmy, you're heavily involved with Hayfield Sheepdog Trials. Oh yes, yes, I'm heavily involved for about 27 years now with Hayfield, you know, which is last summer. You were on that field yourself when we ran a sheepdog trial for Christie's Hospital. And one of our sponsors was the gentleman you were talking to there, which is Mark Ratcliffe and his daughter. Everybody supported. They brought us some equipment as well. So that was all very nice. And I thank Mark again for his sponsorship for Christie's Hospital. And... Christie's Hospital appreciated the money we got for them, which was £2,300 for the day. Well, absolutely. And, of course, you're always trying to introduce new people into sheepdog tiling, and, of course, that's how Mark and Katie got involved. Well, you see, at Hayfield, you see, I've been promoting youngsters and beginners, young and older beginners, into the trials for years. And then when Katie came along, it was grand to see Kate, so it was coming on the trial field and her dad. So Kate was the one that was taking over the running and her dad had run later. That's how I got to know Mark and Kate. And I was very pleased to get to know them. And then they invited me up here for a chat and we come along, watch Katie run her dog. And 
And, and now you see the position she's in after these, after a two or three years, and she's like an advanced young handler now. And her dad is kind of an advanced older handler, if you like. Is there many young people like Casey now getting involved in sheepdog trials? Some of them come in and they leave and they don't come back, but we need to get more of them in. This is part of, of our mission here today. Maybe we can improve on the dogs and promote the dogs, which I always do, promote the dogs. But Casey is really sticking with it now, so she is. But we could do with more people. Lovely to catch up with you, Jimmy. Thank you, Martin, and yourself. Lovely to meet Katie and her dad and of course Jim Hussey. Well done to them all. Now don't go away, we are off for a little break. Welcome back to the show. Now O'Shea's Irish Bar in Manchester has been open 25 years and they had a big weekend of celebrations and we went along to meet them. Dominic. 25 years of O'Shea's, what a weekend you've got on here today. Oh yes Martin, it's a great achievement for the bar, any bar getting to 25 years old. Um, yeah, we've, uh, today's obviously going great, um, bands all day long, uh, some of the old faces, Square Crack, Desi Donnelly, Kieran Cunningham who were there at the very start, to our new bands, Joe Keegan there who've really only developed in the last few years. So it's great to see that young and older uh, bands together, you know. Obviously over the last 25 years, if Everybody's had to work hard to keep our pubs going, but you've had to work hard here in the city centre to keep O'Shea's alive. Oh, we have indeed. Like city centres, people think they're, they're always busy, but uh, our area in particular has been uh, redeveloped over the years. Uh, we lost the BBC beside us, which was 2,500 people worked there, just disappeared overnight. Um, so, yeah, our, our area's regenerated, and we're, we're, we're glad we stuck it around, you know, because the area is back to, to what it was, you know. And of course a lot of thought and money has gone into O'Shea's as well because you've done a lovely job in refurbishing the pub in the last few years. Yeah, as, as you covered yourself a couple of years ago, we, we spent a major uh, refurbishment of £200,000 uh, two years ago and it, it's helped us out. We totally changed our offer of to food and, and stuff like that and really concentrated. But again, keeping the traditional things, the hospitality of O'Shea's, you know, that, that's been the main thing. And of course the pubs has changed down the years, no longer just a pub, is it? You've got food, you've got sports, you've got so much going on here, music as well. Yeah, well that's it, pubs are everything really, you know, from the meeting place, you, you know, I think t 10 years ago when you asked for Wi-Fi in a pub, if, people asked what that was, but now if you don't have it, nobody will come in, you know, it's, it's a, a total change, you know, but yeah, we, we've got everything we'd like to think, you know, and, and we, do it, we do it pretty well. Of course, since the pub has been refurbished, you've had rave reviews about the food you put on here. Well, O'Shea's was always famous for the live music and sport, but we needed something to bring people in during the day and especially during the week. And it's worked really well. You know, the food's going down really well. Simple meals, but they're done well. Uh, all locally sourced ingredients and some ingredients from Ireland as well, too. And of course O'Shea's has become a great family pub now because you get lots of people coming in and families as well. Well you have to cater for the generation with young children and stuff so it's nice for them to be able to come in and have a bite to eat and watch the football or listen to some music and stuff you know. Yeah and of course during the week you've been great supporters of the GEA here in Manchester as well and lots of the clubs come in here and, and celebrate and have nights out. Yeah well I'm involved with O'Shea's as you are yourself you know yeah. so the those players from the men and women's team would be regulars but we do get them in from all the teams to be honest and we do do some fundraising for them as well. You've done really well here today now because you've had music going on from 11 o'clock this morning all day until about 2 a.m. tonight or tomorrow morning. Let's say. <laughs> well it's something that we've often talked about was doing an O'Shea's music festival so it seemed like a good time to, to start one and try it out for the 25th anniversary and so far it's gone really well we're more than happy. 
And Dominic, of course, celebrating 25 years. I know it means a lot to you too, guys, because, you know, there's a lot of traditions here at O'Shea's Pub. Definitely. I think Manchester's famous for Irish or football clubs going back to the 60s, George Best and, and up to Roy Keane and, and the Irish players. And that sort of attraction for Manchester, you know, a lot of Irish people did come over. So we, we work well with that and, and, you know, we do get a lot of visitors. And, and then again, the second generations and third generations are, are still very strong in Manchester, you know, that they've, they've kept them um, traditions going. It's great to see O'Shea's Bar doing so well and their food is fantastic. Now, we are off to meet John F. Kennedy's GA Club in Leeds. They are playing a very special memorial game to remember Sean Sweeney, a young man from Donegal who died at a very young age. This is my homeland, the place I was born in. No matter where I roam. John, tell me what happened to Sean. Uh, Sean had a tragic accident at work one day. He was uh, driving a dumper and somehow he tragically got caught in front of the dumper and uh, he was left in a coma then for about four and a half to five years and after that he just passed away. It happened in uh, York, just out the road from here and he was uh, he spent a long while then in a centre in uh, Stocksbridge down in near Sheffield and uh, he spent, then he started spending a lot of time in hospital in the Northern General Hospital down in Sheffield as well and after that he just deteriorated and he passed away. Of course that was a very very tough time for you and all your family of course with having Sean so ill for a number of years and then sadly passing away. Yeah it was, yeah. it was hard to see him lying the way he was there but like at the end of the day he got the best call he could get you know there was, he was never going to get any better so it was just nice to see he went peacefully in the end up. Now, Marie, Sean made so many friends here in Leeds, didn't he? And especially with uh, JFK's football. Oh, yes, he had an awful lot of friends here. And today now shows, you know, how well, how well thought of he was. He was good at his football now and he enjoyed it very much. And with all his wee comrades around him, yeah, he had a great time with that. He always followed his native Donegal. Oh, always very true to his Donegal roots. Oh, absolutely, yes. Yeah, right, right up until the, to the end, yeah. And of course it's still very raw for you all, you know, Sean's only passed away a few years. That's right, Sean passed away just over three years ago there, and it is very raw for us, you know. Um, it was just such a tragic thing at the age of 21, you know, for him to, to have such a tragic, tragic accident, you know. And um, then, of course, when he passed away, then that, that's it, he was gone then. Well, you've got a, a very special medal uh, you're wearing today. Oh, yes, this, um, it was Sean's, actually, it would have been his 30th birthday yesterday. And my friend Sheila Boyle in La Hanya, um she normally comes over for this memorial game. But um, due to family commitments, she wasn't able to come this year. So she bought this as a memory for me with Sean on it for his 30th birthday. So it means it's very special to me, very, very special. And of course, uh, John, the lads have all got together today from John F. Kennedy's football um, club to have a memorial game here for him in remembrance of Sean. Oh, Sean himself was uh, very fond of the football. You know, and they, they are a great bunch of lads, there's no doubt about it. And uh, he, Sean was a through Gale right at the end. He, he was a fluent Gaelic speaker, he had a gold fan, you know. And they've, uh, they're playing for a special memorial uh, trophy now, aren't they, in yeah. his memory every year? Yeah, they are. They're playing for it every year from now on, yeah. They're, 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 there's a trophy there now to be won. And hope they're proud of the one We're here on uh, Scottle Fields in Leeds for the second annual Sean Sweeney Memorial Tournament. Um, Sean was a good friend of ours who sadly passed away at a young age. So what we do every year is we're trying to uh, relive his memory and keep him with us. So what we've done today is uh, an underage tournament and then an open age tournament and an into club one. So we're all to kind of play with it between ourselves uh, and then keep it going from there. And that's really lovely to you know commemorate this day in his memory. Yeah, it's, it, to be fair, it's one of the things that we can do for him. Sean was the life and soul of the party, so one of there's only anything to be done. He was always there, he was always a helping hand wherever anybody needed him. So I think it's only fitting right that we as a club should, should really honour his memory in that way, and we think this is the best way to do it. And Stephen, you played with Sean. Yeah, I did, yeah, for a number of years, and um, once he came across um, from Ireland, um, I'd say he played for us for 
nigh on 10 years it would have been um, and um, like um, James there um, touched on there it was life and soul at a club and it was testament to him today that there's um, over 50 underage children have um, taken part for John F Kennedy's today and again in the open age past and present players um, there'll be um, circa 50 lads um, <laughs> both on the pitch tonight and then up in the Irish Centre later on having a nice drink for him as well celebrating his 30th birthday which was yesterday. Patrick tell me what uh, Sean was like. Uh, like Steve said, the life and soul of the party was an unbelievable boy. Um, to give an example, we had the cup final here for a, another lad that passed away playing for us, Chris Newman. He was a big part of the club as well. There's a trophy in Leeds that's named after him. And uh, Sean got a bad split on his head very early on in the game. Uh, it took a while for us to get him off the pitch, to be fair. And then instead of going up to hospital to get stitched up, he tied a bandage over his head and it was tied on top of his head in a boat and he spent the whole night, he didn't go to the hospital, came up to the Irish Centre, parted, there's pictures all over Facebook years ago of this and that's the kind of lad he was, he was, he was a great boy, he was a real good boy, so it's, it, like I say, it's a fitting tribute this. Last year we did the game in March, that's when he passed away, the 18th of March, so we did the game in March last year and it was nearly snowing and there's still 150, 200 on the sideline, so again, I think that's just testament to the lad. There's people travelled over from Donegal, people come down from Glasgow last year, people came from America, so again, it just shows shows the type of lad that Sean was, he was well liked around Leeds, nobody would have had a bad word to say about him, uh, young and old, he used to visit a lot of the old people involved with the club, um, he used to go around, visit, have a cup of tea, that's the type of, type of boy he was, so uh, it's lovely to see you know. And Stephen, of course, um, John F Kennedy, you've had great support down the years from your sponsors. Oh yeah, um, um, Moortown and Construction have been um, ever present um, uh, sponsors of the club and also KPH um, sponsoring the underage and more recently um, HB Tunneling Hugh Boyle has um, uh, sponsored all the training tops for the underage and the coaches so um, huge. without them it's hard to run a club um, uh, like John F Kennedy's. James of course the season is just about getting underway now are you looking forward to playing quite a bit of football this year? We are and I think this is one of the testaments from the club is we, we always see ourselves as a family club uh, the three of us we've come through our underage section that's why we try to reinvigorate that now to give their next generation the chance to play football games in open age and thankfully we're one of the well we're the only club in Leeds who offers that transition from youth football right through to adult grade and we're very very proud of that uh, and a testament really whenever we come around we're, uh, we're very reliant on our on our youth structures coming through and obviously some uh, overseas players coming in to, to join us and, and we really appreciate that so we're very looking forward to getting this game underway now. Well well done to the three of you and well done for remembering Sean Sweeney as well. It's a very sad time for all Sean's family and many friends. May he rest in peace. Now that brings us to the end of the show for this week. Henry McGlade is back with his show next Thursday evening at 7 o'clock and we are here with the Irish in the UK at 7.30. All on Sky Channel 192. See you next time. Hey.